I'm going to lay out a mechanical reason why humans are, and I think will always be more creative than computer AI. And it's not letting me go through my slides. Oh, there we go. Okay. So it turns out computers can be very creative. Um, they create using something known as divergent thinking, which is actually discovered by uh, the United States Air Force at the end of World War II. And divergent thinking, for those of you who don't know, basically works by mixing matching from sets. So we can do amazing things like come up with new words like love punk um, and of course the pigeon rats. And because computers have the ability to hold much bigger sets in their heads and combine them much more arbitrarily than humans, AIs like GPT-3 and ArtReader can do astonishingly weird stuff like you're seeing on your screen, and can also crank it out millions and millions and millions and millions of times faster than humans can. So this would seem to indicate that AI not only can be, but already is much more creative than humans, because it turns out that the dominant explanation in both universities and businesses for why humans are creative is also divergent thinking. So if computers are better at divergent thinking than humans are, then why don't we already have an AI Maya Angelou or an AI Van Gogh or an AI Steve Jobs? Is it due to some mysterious emergent quality of the human brain like consciousness or free will? So I think there's a mechanical explanation. Um, and the mechanical explanation goes back about 525 million years ago to the origins of the animal neuron. And at that point, the neuron diverged to do two separate things. And this is a way of rethinking what is a, um, a kind of common view in a lot of AI circles that actually all human neurons just do one thing, which is represent one or zero as a kind of bina binary representation. In fact, it turns out that the human brain, or excuse me, the animal neuron evolved on the one hand to see, and the neurons that evolved to see they developed um, mechanisms to promote induction, symbolic logic, correlational thinking, that allows them to handle nouns, adjectives, linking verbs, do representation. And these form the primary parts of our visual cortex and other parts of the logic center of our cortex. And those parts of our brain are what do divergent thinking. But then other neurons evolve to do a different function, which is to move, to coordinate muscles. And it turns out that the mechanisms in those neurons are very different from the mechanisms in the first neurons. And they allow neurons to experiment, to do something known as narrative cognition, uh, to think causally, to handle action verbs. And those neurons form the bulk of our motor cortex and the planning centers of our brain. And they allow us to create by doing something known as reverse engineering, which is basically thinking backwards from function to mechanism. And the interesting thing is that there's no known way to reduce the list of functions on the right side of the screen to the functions on the left side of the screen. People have tried for a long time, Aristotle tried, Bertrand Russell tried, modern language, uh, natural language processors have tried. Um, and there's good reasons to think that it's never gonna happen, that there are two distinct mechanisms um, that evolve for different functions and are ultimately irreducible to each other. So what does this mean? Well, this is interesting because it turns out that narrative cognition, which is the part of creativity that comes from that second type of neuron in our motor cortex, is largely responsible for driving things in the human brain, such as the development of new technologies, which AI can't do, new business plans, new scientific hypotheses, new novels, new movies, new life strategies, all things which current AI can't do. And so there's reason to think that actually what we might need to do is pursue this new mechanism, explore this new mechanism. And if we want to nurture creativity, the way to do it is shift away from focusing entirely on divergent thinking and focus on this other mechanism for coming up with different ways of doing things. Um, if you're interested, I have more on this in an article that's coming out in a few weeks from the New York Academy of Sciences. And also what we're trying to do in my lab is operationalize this. Most of what we're trying to do to operationalize it is to come up with new forms of training creativity in humans. So we're working a lot with public school districts and charter schools, and also with 
U.S. soldiers to come up with training that we can show increases their ability to do narrative cognition and creative problem solving. But since training humans uh, isn't as fun and innovative in our world as developing new kinds of technology, we are also working with the Department of Defense to build a new type of non-computational machine, which does narrative cognition and which could potentially in the future be married with computers to create a broader um, and more complete AI creativity. Thank you.